Now that we've built our simple little show here um, with our thunder and then our phone ring and then the song starting, why don't we, we were going to need to add a little more sophistication to all of this, right? So our storm sounds pretty good and that's doing just fine. Our phone ring though is running on a loop, right? Where it rings six times, but our performer is going to come over there and answer that phone. And when they answer the phone, obviously the phone rings need to stop and that needs to be a cue that we actually um, are able to control and call to stop that phone room uh, phone ring loop so what I want to do is insert a control cue and I'm going to insert a control cue um, from my toolbar it's the little it's the two little gears that are here and if you hover over it it says insert control cue and if I click on that it's added a new control cue now just like any sound cue if I right click on it I can go to cue properties and now I'm going to change this description rather than just saying new control cue why don't we put in a description that tells us what it really does and I'm going to say that this stops phone ring. Now, this is the first time that we can use our Q advance. Right now, this says that it's going to start advance. What we really want it to do is to stop. And if I use the pull down here, I can say I want it to end, end advance. So it's going to end the Q that is playing. Right? And I'll just call this while I'm here, I'll say it's Q3 and say accept. And I'll go back and do Q properties for my phone ring and just make it Q number two, accept. And then you can see my Q list is lining up over here. So I'm already highlighted on the single phone ring, go. And I'm standing by for the phone to stop and when they arrive and pick up the phone I can just hit that stop cue so that's an example of a control cue right this is a control cue and what it did all it did was end the previous cue and advance my go bar to the next cue and that's all it did right so now I've stopped the phone ring. Next is going to be the milk carton kids. Okay, so that's a really pretty guitar intro, and I like the idea that that's going to underscore the scene. But when we get to the vocal part of the song, we're going to want to fade that down. We're going to want to pull that down a little bit so that um, it uh, doesn't, um, doesn't overpower the actors in the scene. So I'm going to need another control cue that's there. So to add a control cue, all we're going to do is select insert control cue and click and now we have a new control cue. If I select that control cue, right click, cue properties, and now I'm going to say fade milk carton kids. I hope I spelled that right. Fade Milk Carton Kids, maybe I'll make that a capital F just for good measure, right? And that's great. So now, what do I want to do with this? I'm not going to just end it and advance to the next cue. Now I want to actually make a fade. If I go to my Control tab, you'll see by default that the action selected is a volume change. What I want to do is affect a volume change and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that end volume and let's say that it's going to go down to about 30 dB, right? It's going to affect a volume change on my previous cue and I can also set a time. Let's say a time 6. Accept. So now when I play the Milk Carton Kids, I'm 
I'm standing by for when the vocals start. And now I fade them down. Right? So now it serves as underscoring. Now, that may have faded a little too quietly. Let's go back to Q Properties, Control. I'm going to come up just a little bit. Why don't we make that about 22? And I say Accept. And that's great. Let's try it again. Now note this a timer here and when they start to sing. It's right around 19 seconds that they start to sing, right? Here, we'll play it again and watch the timer. And we're gonna stand by to fade them down about 18 seconds. And go. Right? So it fades that song down so it can serve as underscoring through the song. Right? Let's go ahead and stop all. Right? That's great. But that means I need to sit there and manually stand by that cue every single time. Right? I may want to make this an auto follow. If I select the original cue, right, and I go to um, Cue Properties, this is where the Cue Advanced section really can come in handy. This says Start and then Advance and Stand By for the next cue. Instead of doing that, I would like to go ahead, Start, and Play the next cue. I want it to automatically play the next cue and I say accept. Now when I hit go, it automatically starts that fade down, but it started that fade down too soon. I wanted to wait those 19 seconds or 18 seconds. Stop all. If I go to the fade cue, cue properties, you'll see that I can do what's a pre-wait, which means that it's going to wait a predetermined amount of time before it fades down. And I think we had set that at about 18 seconds. And I'm going to say accept. Let's go to here. Now watch, when I hit the go button, it's going to automatically play the milk carton kids. It's going to wait 18 seconds and then play fade the milk carton kids. Playing. Coming up on the fade, and here it goes, and it automatically fades the milk carton kids to become underscore. Let's go ahead and stop and let's add one more cue to all of this. Let's add a control cue for when we get to the end of the scene and we need to fade that song out. And that one is going to be a manual cue. So let's go and we're going to add a control cue, right? And I'm going to go right click on cue properties and we're going to say fade out. Fade out the milk kids, right? And now I want to go to control. I'm going to have another volume change. I'm going to fade down to all the way out, negative 60 dB, and I'm going to take five seconds to do that, right? And that's going to be a volume change. Now, here's the trick. We're going to be affecting a volume change, but what are we affecting a volume change on? The previous cue? The previous cue is simply a control cue. We really want to affect by clicking the pull down list here, we can select any cue in our list and we want to fade out the milk carton kids cue. 
right? Here are all of our cues and we want to fade out. We want to select the cue that we want to have fade out. And so let's say accept, right? And now we play. We automatically wait 18 seconds. And when we get to the vocals, it will automatically fade down. And here's our fade. Now the song underscores and we're able to talk over it. Our performers interact. And when I hit the go button now, it fades out at the end of the scene. So that's how we're able to do an auto follow, affect time change. You know, um, the um, control cues can also do pans, pitch changes. It's a matter of selecting the um, cue properties, right? And in control, determining what you want it to do. You can stop a cue, pause a cue, resume a cue, right? Do a volume change, which is by default. Change the pan. In addition to that, you can set the parameters. So if we were making a pan change, we would pan from left to right right? A volume change, right? And we can also determine how fast that happens. And you have to be aware that whatever action you're going to take, where, what are you taking um, action on? What is your target, right? So that is a little bit about multiplay and how to use it.